Mr. Today Pierre Randy. He's still in Berlin because of the strike in the airport yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it's a pity. And we have Simon Bird also. Yep. Um, and what we're going to talk about is the uh, work uh, Valentina and Peter Jan invest in themselves, which is also part of their whole larger project of the uh, market for immaterial value. And actually, I will give the word directly to Valentina because you will introduce yourself and you will introduce her. No, you will introduce yourself as well. Yeah. So, uh, and afterwards, we will see the the video here out of the work. And uh, Stellan will also be talking about a lot of the conceptual things about this yeah. work. So, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Charlotte, and also welcome, yeah. also from my side, to the first shareholders meeting. Market <laughs> <laughs> for material value. It's, <laughs> it's lovely to have you all here. Um, unfortunately, our other shareholders from Berlin could not be part of this meeting, but that's why we're making a podcast, and we will um, also put that on, on the website marketformaterialvalue.com where we put actually all other podcasts that we make when we talk with different experts about the um, arts economy, but also the economy at large. So there's like a big research there that you can look into. Um, so I have initiated together with Peter Young this project called Market for Material Value when um, we had a uh, we were awarded uh, the Willem Fluse Residency for Artistic Research from Transmedial Festival and the Willem Fluse Archive. And we started this project where we are basically trying to create um, an alternative art market uh, based on this idea of the sharing economy, so there is not one big uh, investor or collector buying this conceptual piece of art that you see over there, which is called Valentin and Peter Invest in Themselves, and it's um, an earlier work from 2013. Um, and uh, so instead of one person owning it all, we have uh, devised this structure where people can make smaller contributions and thus owning like a share of the work like this. Um, but I will not explain much more because the, the video is very self-explanatory, so I would like to play it from the beginning to the end for you to see. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think before we do that, we would, I would like also to introduce you Stein, yeah. who is uh, our newest uh, expert yes. addition into the project. The <laughs> <laughs> um, so Stein, yeah. you can tell us also a bit what were yeah. your interests. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I guess I was introduced to the work um, by Valentina and Peter Young through a friend of ours, Helmut, and um, I, I was interested in it because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a PhD researcher uh, in, in, in art history but dealing with commodification of digital art and art and value. Um, and um, I, will, I, I, I can maybe say a bit more uh, later but for me what's, what's interesting uh, to the work is, is how it um, yeah how it investigates uh, by proposing an alternative the way in which uh, value uh, value creation works in art which is always a bit of a of a, a, a weird uh, marriage art and economy but it's always there nonetheless and uh, I think I think the project um, proposes yeah a nice occasion to think and discuss about it as we will do today. Um, also, I think for the recording, uh, it's good if you all could introduce yourselves. I mean, I think most people here know each other, but um, this will make transcription if, if we do that a bit easier. And then indeed we'll move to the, to the video. I will say, I will give um, a brief, very brief introduction to some of the questions we've come up today with for the, uh, for the shareholders meeting. But I think we don't need to stick to these questions that we have prepared. We can sort of digress as the conversation goes along as well. Yes. So uh, maybe if you would like to... <coughs> yeah, my name is uh, Annie Uja Aanfeld and I'm a curator. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just something simple. Yeah. Yes, uh, my name is Mike Zagavira and uh, I am uh, in 
interested in these uh, platforms that you bring to the table today. <laughs> also working with art mm -hmm. in different ways. My name is Soren Silvafonda and I'm a Danish video artist. My name is Eden Bak Elmstrom and I'm a curator and director here at 68. My name is Maria Dembeck and uh, consider me an observer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and my name is Charlotte Prastegård Schwarz and I'm an art historian, PhD, and one of the creators of this uh, show. Uh, Christopher. Uh, my name is Christopher Sand Iverson and I'm writer and editor here at 68 Art Nation. Great. Uh, yeah, so we we move to the let's move to the video a little bit. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, if it wasn't clear already, you can all get your share here. It's <laughs> fun. Um, yeah, so as, as I hope has become clear from the, from the demo video, Market for Material Value is an experiment in creating, validating and disseminating art in the era of the immaterial economy. Um, the project, like you said before, is an attempt at establishing a market or the artwork um, that you see here um, in a way that um, what distinguishes it is that it's much more communi community-based and open and transparent uh, than the regular art market, which is more or less a closed-off system uh, where insider information is often important and where you rely on personal networks. Um, but also, of course, uh, the art market is dependent on the participation of um, people with just an, an, a very large amount of capital to, to invest in the market. Um, so in comparison with, with the, the more blue chip uh, expensive high up uh, sections of the art market um, you might say that um, uh, that that those sections operate in a way that's uh, sort of comparable to uh, the financial market and the big players there uh, and to sort of continue this analogy I would say that market for immaterial value uh, by contrast can perhaps best be compared to um, do sort of micro-financing or micro-crediting uh, practices. Um, and I, th I think it's comparable not only because it's the, the sums that are invested are ultimately relatively small, but also because uh, there is an emphasis uh, on the sort of uh, grassroots, uh, horizontal setup uh, of the project. Again, the community character that we sort of uh, also want to reinforce today. Um, this is um, the community character, I mean, it also has to do with the fact that um, up until now, at least, uh, the amount of investors is relatively small. Mm -hmm. We have 24 since yesterday, I guess. Yes. Um, so that makes it still possible for the project to, to, to function on, on sort of, uh, on the basis of strong social bonds and mutual trust, you know, and you, it also, it's, 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 it helps that you, that the threshold is kind of low, you can become uh, a shareholder investing only a relatively small uh, amount of money. Um, and everyone who invests has, has a sort of a say in, in the, the direction the project is heading, um, which as you've seen in the video is relevant, especially when a bid is made that's higher than the total uh, value of the artwork in which case it could be sold, right? So the, the whole yes, thing to... to Duty to ask everybody. Yeah. 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 Um, More work for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a sense, there, there's a, there's a, a sense of, of, of sort of democratic creation of value, but then dem democratic not in an abstract or anonymous sense, but um, yeah, in a more agonistic sense of, of, of coming together and having a concentrated discussion about where to take the project, and that's also the plan for the shareholders meeting today. Um, maybe to just give you a little bit of a background as well uh, into some of the questions that we have prepared today. It's, it's um, the, the concrete uh, reason or incident uh, or the concrete discussion between us and Peter also, of course, um, that, that, that we started from is uh, the question if 
if um, some people who have uh, who have invested labor, who have invested time and effort in the project, um, if if they can be rewarded with um, with uh, with a share in the in the in the mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. without without investing in it necessarily. So the idea that we talked about for quite a long time actually is that um, these are people who invest not. Um, you know, not a sum of cash, but uh, these may be like editors, people who helped you with yeah. the website. And, I mean, the goals. Knowledge so. labor. Yes, or, uh, knowledge yeah. labor. So the the idea is that all these things uh, they they take place. They also add to the value of 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 the and also of the economic value. I would say of of the of the project. Um, but then again, like this 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 value that is added, it isn't reflected. In so, so, some total uh, amounts uh, of the investment. So, for instance, um, yeah, for instance, me, I wrote a, I wrote it's a, a personal story. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm actually talking about myself now. Yeah. Um, in, in in December 2016, I believe it was I I so like I said before, I encountered their work and I wrote a brief text uh, about market for material value that we published in a small journal that I. That I uh, that I'm an editor of in Amsterdam, and then later another version of the text was published on the website. Um, so uh, that you can all read. That you can all read. Um, so in, in this case, you know that that's what started our conversation in the sense that it's it's hard to assess the effects of of, of these kind of, this kind of work that happens. Uh, you can't measure, of course, the way in which this amount uh, increases the value of the artwork. But still, it's sort of common sense and common understanding in the art world that um, these things, this is a sort of critical attention to the artwork, but also press attention, um, adds to the value. That sort of, if, if more people see it, um, in a way, all the, all these these looks that people give, the attention that people pay to the to the project sticks sticks to it and increases its value. So that's how we um, how we sort of started talking. Also, especially because, and I think it's interesting that the video uh, also refers to precarity. Because I mean, it, there's an awareness that um, people who who provide immaterial labor still live in a material world. You know, and, and, and need to uh, like in the Madonna song. Um, <laughs> I mean, everybody basically, everybody basically still needs to pay the rent. So I mean, that that sort of uh, the idea of, of 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 giving shares was also um, a way to acknowledge the fact that this, you know, this labor is in in, in some way valuable. Then on the other hand, um, it brings um, it brings sort of. Making giving people shares who haven't invested money in the in the project makes it speculative, which brings uh, which brings with it a whole number of issues. Um, for instance, you can very easily understand how some of the shareholders who did pay uh, an amount of money would consider it unfair. Uh, I find that very understandable, but especially like if if, if someone would want to withdraw. Um, Basically, if it, uh, when you go into the speculation, you you create a, a sort of bubble that can ultimately burst, in the sense that um, if you were to re remunerate uh, everyone who worked on it, the value of the project would increase. Um, but then, if people um, if people who have invested uh, in, in it would want to you know buy their stock back and want to basically cash in on the profit, that wouldn't be possible because the money, uh, yeah, just like in a banking crisis, it just wouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. um, now, um, another thing I want to highlight is that, you know, in the video it's pointed out that um, contrary to to um, to the regular art markets, the, mar the, the value of the project here is not defined by a single powerful source, as it says. Um, I think it's a, a, a bit more a, a bit more complex than that. Maybe I, th I think of, um, you know value is always sort of contingent of a web of social interactions. But what's interesting to me is that um, that in this case these um, these relations are sort of rendered explicit, uh, which forces us to think about um, yeah 
the practicalities uh, and the pros and cons of speculation and of wanting to grow and uh, yeah that's I think what we want to do today mm -hmm. so we can maybe now hand out uh, yes. the questions that we have prepared again we don't at all have to stick to do these or do it in this order necessarily yeah. maybe you can pick up on some of our yeah. suggestions yeah. yeah also if you have questions like right now or if you have remarks or uh, Right. Then we would love to hear them. I think the question about how it can uh, how it can develop, how it can mm. grow, is also extremely mm. important. Mm. Extremely important because um, is it a purpose that you really wanted to? To, to to grow like of course you want more shareholders mm -hmm. and there's a natural growing there mm -hmm. but uh, could you also you talked about it could be sold and mm -hmm. that would maybe release a larger amount of money but I, yeah I think this question about how it can develop how it can how it can grow mm -hmm. and also how you can actually sell their shares? Uh, could you do it in other contexts, that in an art context like here? Mm -hmm. Could be interesting to, to talk about. Um, have you? I mean, you have um, showed it at the Transmediale, which is also kind of mm -hmm. an art context, I know. But have you talked about? Uh, putting it into other contexts mm. and see how people will react and it could also be an experiment in itself. Yes, <laughs> mm, yeah, that could be an interesting approach. We've talked about something similar mm. for quite a while, like how would it be if we would go, uh, I don't know, for example, if we would take it to Silicon Valley and mm. then get, get venture capital mm. and make a startup out of it, you know. Mm. Yes, that could be a possibility, and actually, um, I'm Do you not. Then produce more coins. <laughs> uh, no, but maybe we could do with other art, other people's art artworks, ah. for example. Uh, but I'm not, you know, I'm not so interested in doing this job myself. Exactly, <laughs> for me, it's still interesting to create a discourse, and I, I really want this to function. That's why we do it with actual money. Because I want to create a, like a, a, a prototype, that um, and it fits very well under this idea that that I work with, which is art as simulation. Yeah. So I, I see, you know, my artworks as places where I can experiment with uh, creating different infrastructures mm -hmm. that work in a in a confined scale and in a, in a uh, yeah, in a scale that I can more or less control, or I can um, follow at least what's happening, uh, and then I can talk about it, and I can think about it. You know, this can produce more ideas and so on. But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I could scale up at some point. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I'd like to add a question, it's a bit related to what Charlotte was asking about, but uh, it's because um, uh, the other artists who are showing in this show, Golden Centipede, mm -hmm. they also have um, tried to work with investment as an artistic mm -hmm. performative form. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what they have done uh, is that they um, took exhibition projects and um, tried to buy uh, an investor, an expert, uh, get this money uh, mm -hmm. into uh, market speculation to add uh, a value, but it could also, of course, go wrong. And then they did a performance over um, sort of the drama of the of the mm -hmm. stock, mm -hmm. so to speak. Like how uh, it went wrong and how it went. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, someone like was shocked, but not shocked, and mm -hmm. blood splatter on the wall. I tried to dramatize it with these protagonists okay. that they were working with. Which is very cool, but then I was thinking because I'm a shareholder as well, uh, and uh, I was thinking if it would be possible to suggest because you're saying now that maybe someone can um, can have a share without paying, and yeah. could it be interesting to uh, see if there's in someone's network or call out for uh, an investor expert 
take part of the money that exists mm -hmm. in the project already mm -hmm. and um, and try and give it one shot to um, generate a surplus <laughs> extra mm -hmm. immaterial value by uh, investing in something completely different. Yeah. But it could also be something conceptual that is directed towards specific investment, but I don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. um, I think that's, that could be an interesting development and it kind of fits of this idea of doing a project within the project, like that's yeah. what mm -hmm. we're also doing here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There is also another project, the gigantic jelly blob that I will tell you, like you saw some of the jelly already yes. in the video, yes. but mm -hmm. that relates also to, to an investment. And, and no, it was a performative okay. work as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it kind of all fits together. So. But what I was trying to say, I mean, um, I would love it if this could happen, but I think I'm not the right person to pursue something like that. But mm. maybe one of our shareholders mm -hmm. would like, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to, yeah. to, to initiate some discussions and then maybe other people can do. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm not so um, grabbing you yeah. know, upon this project to have my yeah. authority no. over it. Yeah, that is one yeah. of the that is one of the concerns, right? And to what extent that you and Peter Jan should still yeah. be the artist, um, sort of leading at the helm of the of the project, whereas the idea indeed is that it's uh, at least in theory so, so a community that also works on itself, and it's an ongoing discussion between uh, between a group of people. Which also, I mean, this gets more complicated as soon as the group of people grows and is scattered mm. geographically mm. Um, but basically you're saying now that you're up for that and that you would like to give control I mean, to sort of distance control a bit uh, yeah it's good. I mean I'm always fantasizing this I've done tons of projects that I uh, initiate mm. a collective thing mm -hmm. and then as long as I step out it dissolves nicely sure. to, you know, it goes back to the earth but uh, <laughs> so you have a system for for example if I wanted to talk to the 24 other mm. shareholders how do yeah. I uh, talk to them or chat with them or this is something uh, we haven't, I mean, their names are published, mm -hmm. and of course, you can ask us for their email addresses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could contact them, but um, I think that we would like to develop is this online tools for. Some document mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. there is uh, these um, tools where you can do meetings online mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. many people. Mm -hmm. I forgot what they're called, they're, uh, like online yeah. referendums, yeah. Mm -hmm. for example. And Conference. that. That's a, a next performance. We will, I mean, okay. if we find the mm -hmm. possibility to have uh, mm -hmm. some support for that, we sure. would really love to do something like this. I think I need a, a bit of a clarification here, right? Because mm -hmm. what we can invest in right now, or the audience can invest in, or participators or shareholders, is the piece uh, Valentina and Peter invest in themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here we talk, we talk about something called market for immaterial value, if you want that to grow. Mm. So is that an idea of a market of immaterial value wherein this is the only product right now, but there could be other products uh, by Absolutely. other artists? Or are we talking about the growth of that product uh, as an investment? At the moment, this is our yeah. only investment. You can only buy shares of that. Yeah. Uh, but we could think, you know, if there is interest from other artists to bring in their artworks mm -hmm. that, I don't know, can be of whatever nature mm -hmm. into this, and then we could issue more, you know, probably the shares that would have to be different so that you can maybe like a classification of different mm -hmm. shares. It could go into that direction, I suppose. No. Yeah. Um, what about like when you have a vote, if we should sell it, the artwork or not? Is it then dependent? I, maybe you already said it, but I, I didn't get it. If, if how much you have invested, you have more to say, or is it no. equally for everybody? It, it's equal. Even though you only paid mm. eight hundred or ten euros. Yeah. yeah. You have one vote. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Does that yeah. reflect how it works out there in the real market? In the real market, if you could ever say such a thing <laughs> without uh, blinking nervously. <laughs>
I think in, not. In, no, in, 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 in companies usually, like if you're a 51% shareholder, mm-hmm. you, you, you basically can make all the decisions. Yeah. But uh, we didn't unless, want this to happen actually. Yeah. That's why everybody has like mm-hmm. equal power. Mm-hmm. Because, if you, you know, um, we didn't want to make this division between rich and poor people. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. so. so it is written into the contract. That everybody is equal. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it in the contract? Is it? I think it should be, but <laughs> <laughs> or in some yeah. form. Yeah. Are part of the collective currency. Mm-hmm. Uh, equity holders are part of the collective currency, and their name shall be exhibited. And then, uh, equity all holders also hold the right to propose exhibitions. Uh huh. It doesn't say anything explicitly, I think, about the... Uh, <laughs> it about could be that. Uh, yeah. Like an, an, an appendix, yeah. Did mm-hmm. they yeah. it before the trial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> before it really gets uh, yeah. valuable. Yeah. Yeah, you think it will get valuable? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that could be nice. And we can invite a big audience into the mm. courtroom. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. Even, yes. No, it was just uh, actually in relation to what uh, also what Sam was uh, asking about, or this idea that there would be more artworks added. And I think there's a comparable mm-hmm. format that already kind of exists, which is called mm-hmm. the artist pension, the uh, pension trust, the yeah. pension trust, the yeah, yeah, pension yeah. trust. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, I don't know specifically all the details, but I know that artist Valid Rad has done a research project into the speculative uh, constructions of um, artist pension trust. Uh, Mm -hmm. But of course the idea is that some um, quite uh, established or Mm well-known artists get the honor of uh, being uh, into this pension system and then they donate works uh, without maybe much value uh, numbers on the works, but it's just like this donation. so I'm just thinking, if we were to, to think about um, the the problems or the critique around uh, mm. artist pension trust and compare it to if this one became mm. a bit like uh, mm-hmm. I know it's not the how would you mean? I think you're, what you're asking is how would you then curate with mm. people get to market for a material value or not in the same way. Yeah. Like, how do people mm-hmm. get into mm-hmm. the artist pension trust? Maybe that's part of the question, and yeah. then the other part is that uh, um, that if, like, this single coin mm-hmm. uh, is the material uh, needle right now, mm-hmm. but if the material points are multiplied, mm-hmm. uh, let's say, by thousands or something, mm-hmm. and there are specific artworks that suddenly goes up in mm-hmm. value, um, mm-hmm. then do you... Would you have to? You, you would probably have to sell them at the highest point because mm-hmm. it's a short time when artist peaks on markets. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take yes. that many year, years. So if you don't sell it off, and who do you sell to? In the mm-hmm. art markets, always a hierarchy of, um, mm-hmm. yeah. which can also be fun to talk about. Maybe this selection of, of buyers, the right buyers, all mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you would have to take the. You could keep the money in the project. Uh, but it could also be placed elsewhere um, mm-hmm. to not let it be affected by the economy that exists in this. So I think if you were to take a collective decision that it was multiple artworks, I think it changes the project uh, mm-hmm. quite a bit uh, mm-hmm. in ways that could be a good um, point for discussing the performativity and the market uh, stuff because it's an yeah. expanded concept, but it also yeah. m- potentially complicates uh, mm-hmm. things. Hmm. A bit. It, dep- it depends on how you would do it, right? Because yeah. you, you, there's, there's, I guess, two scenarios if you were to expand to different artworks. Either you sort of market for material value, then would become a platform, sort of, uh, and you take part in investment of a single piece on there. There's a stock market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Stock exchange. yeah. 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 I mean, it is comparable to a yeah. stock exchange already. Yeah. So you could you could say either you, it's a platform for the investment into discrete, uh, specific art objects, and you can invest there. And if that you know makes value, then you know your the value of your stock increases and you make a profit. But you don't connect it to all the other artworks necessarily that are in the platform. Or you could indeed say 
you inc you include many artworks and the value of the project is the sum total. Because then it's art dealing. Yeah, yes. and then then you yeah. then you then you That's become cool. sort of a yeah. yeah really a market. Yeah. Then I, I change the fashion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe that's the way to make uh, money, and then I can, uh, you know, invest them back into my own artworks <laughs> and make myself really high, <laughs> like very blue chip um, No, this is a super normal practice in in the art market, of course. Mm -hmm. Like to use insider knowledge to sort of, uh, yeah, pump and dump practices, as they call it. And then you you basically um, pump and dump. Well, you 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 um, you. You can sort of, and this happens a lot on the art market, you can manipulate the, the prices of And if you have the right insider knowledge, you know uh, what artist is going to get exhibitions, where, at what point, then, you know, you, you as, as, a, as a private investor, you invest in that artwork, in that, in that artist first, and then, you know, so this actually kind of happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You can exhaust the value yeah. if you want, and that yeah. happens quite often, yeah. especially with young, younger artists who yeah. doesn't understand uh, yeah. which, uh, mm. what hands they're mm. in, and uh, if the gallerist uh, has uh, concerns for the artist's mm. overall uh, mm. lifelong practice, or they mm. just want to uh, make yeah. a quick, yeah. uh, a quick, quick uh, mm. market peak mm. and, uh, and mm. take the top money and let it... Uh, yeah. yeah, but also just the, 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 the yeah, investing right before you know that the value is going to get up, and and it's it's I always find it very interesting because if you if you do this in, in the regular uh, financial market, it's illegal. You know, you mm -hmm. you, you can't you can't uh, if 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 you if you conduct business uh, having I don't know how to say this in English precisely, but. Certain certain knowledge is in advance that you know will affect the value. This this is illegal yeah. Yeah. in the art market. It's, it's, <laughs> quite, it's, it's, quite, it's quite normal um, to do this. But um, insider trading. Insider yeah, trading, exactly. exactly. Yeah. But I guess in a, in a format where market for material value would contain different artworks, and you could invest in every single artwork. Mm -hmm. The level of transparency that mm -hmm. that kind of thing is inherent in your project mm -hmm. would also make for quite a portal. Of bubbles yeah. and viewing who is being invested in mm -hmm. and and so on, mm -hmm. maybe exactly. make for a weird speculation or at least yeah. a, a weird power play between artists, yeah, yeah, yeah. Artists, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where a shared mm -hmm. uh, share or that you are have a collective mm -hmm. share in the pool mm -hmm. would make maybe for a, a, a differently distributed yeah. economy between yeah. networks. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, indeed, I mean the the transparency that's now. Kind of crucial would then become would then become I guess uh, a source of value in itself. You know, mm -hmm. you can very easily imagine like, oh, this guy is investing. You know, he's he's an important gallerist. He likes this work. I need to buy. The, I need to buy a share as well, or something like that. You know? um, but also, yeah, yeah, it works a bit like uh, with Facebook. You know, standards. You know, yeah. who yeah. Uh, are the cool kids in, uh, in this <laughs> Facebook group? <laughs> Also become yeah, even something as old school as artifacts, mm -hmm. where you can now, as an artist as well, buy into to updating your CV in there, mm -hmm. which makes you actually able to to shop more value as an artist mm -hmm. for money. It's mm -hmm. like buying a sword in World of Warcraft, just mm -hmm. uh, buying more likes yeah. or or, yeah. or more shows, um, which is all, which also makes it quite a a, a bubbly uh, uh, economy. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. yeah. we all have long uh, curriculums, details if we write them ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where is it that, that you can buy? It's artifacts. artifacts. Yeah. Yeah. It, it used to be museum it. people and yeah. curators and so on, but now it's also artists that yeah. can buy in. Purchase access to. To upload great, pictures great. and upload uh, mm -hmm. the yeah. yeah, okay. And that, of course, bumps you up on any chain. But they have artifacts as a sort of a ranking algorithm yeah. of their own? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you can buy into that ranking algorithm, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, put more points yeah. in. Okay. Yeah, I, d I didn't know you could actually manipulate your own position mm -hmm. on, the, on, the, on the graph. That's interesting. So now, all this time, we've been discussing. Um, mm -hmm. Number one, right? Yeah. How to give shareholders more agency. Growing and actually, it went a lot into this direction of 
uh, expanding the project with more artworks, which we did not expect actually to discuss yeah. about that. So it's interesting that it uh, took on this yeah. turn, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, indeed, if, if that would happen, you would have to also offer as part of the platform a sort of a way to um, way for the shareholders to communicate, I guess, or maybe yeah, not yeah, at all. Definitely. Um, yeah, yeah uh, that's, that's a question I have in general, like, how would you as shareholders then indeed communicate with the others, or, you know, how would that work, would that, there is like, the comment section on mm. the blogs, then you have mm. like one comment from your mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if there was a special question or right. something specific from you, you and Peter, mm. then I think the shareholders would begin to communicate, but not just out of the blue. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But if or if something happens. Hi, so, yeah. Yeah. Hi, yes. Yeah, yeah our museum was, you know, was mm. wanting to, to buy the project, the market, the platform, mm. and it, it could be interesting. So, if a question like that comes out, I think people would find it really interesting to mm -hmm. discuss, maybe not all of them, but. Yeah. yeah. But how can we get to that point? Mm. You know? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also the one that you mentioned this with, mm. if. if you should be able to, to obtain um, um, uh, what do you say? Uh, one of these? <laughs> yeah. In, uh, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, doing other work, like if you help with the project, uh, mm. writing a text or something. Mm -hmm. That could also be a question that the shareholders could discuss. Yeah, mm -hmm. this, I mean, yeah, yeah that's so something. It doesn't have to be a museum, to say, yeah. but something that yeah. actually has a meaning somehow. Yeah. To, I mean, the museum would be perfect, but mm. yeah. that's a smaller question, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. You have some. Yeah. I just think uh, what is interesting about the, the social aspect of it, uh, of the shareholders communicating, is that, uh, for example, I know someone who uh, who uh, is uh, is he doesn't have a lot of money or anything, but he's investing, and and every morning he opens up his uh, his charts to look right. at how his own stocks are going. If he wants to resell, it's quite a. Uh, I know him well. It's quite an emotional uh, roller coaster uh, to see him uh, checking his uh, computer in the morning. Is it a good day? Is it a bad day? Mm -hmm. Sometimes calling someone else to talk about, um, mm -hmm. you know, do you think it's a good good idea to move now? And it's uh, I don't completely understand what they're talking about, but uh, I can see the emotional side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that this person also had a, a past in uh, where he had some problems with gambling and. Uh, I think there's a close relationship between being uh, actively uh, on a daily practice um, in this uh, market uh, games, uh, yeah. I would call them, um, but uh, often individuals are alone. Uh, they might call one other person to confirm something, but maybe between two. But there's something different happening if you have 24 Mm -hmm. Like, I know it's not on a market now, but yeah. if we were just to imagine that it was or something, mm -hmm. uh, and there was drama around it, and there was mm -hmm. emotion peaks, and decisions mm -hmm. were not taken by a single person, but, but collectively, or could, can we even do that? Is that possible if the stress level uh, in one person goes mm -hmm. on, and they want to buy, buy, buy mm -hmm. now, or sell, 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 or something mm -hmm. like that? I like that, mm -hmm. uh, that there is... A, the chance of it to um, materialize the emotional um, mm -hmm. stuff in the project, um, and it's not to throw uh, like another like you should do this or something. I just yeah, yeah, think yeah. in my mind it's interesting yeah. to see if uh, if it someday or maybe some other people gets involved and could could be interested in. in Finding a, a form for that, mm -hmm. but it is a good point because it is a motivation for mm -hmm. the, the platform, mm -hmm. the market, actually to develop the, mm -hmm. this motivation that you're talking about in the individual mm -hmm. shareholder. Yeah. Just picking up on what you said, I think I'm, I I don't know how it would work out in practice if you really had a, a, a dialogue within a community of, of shareholders or investment or sort of what to do with the project. I, I, I can sort of speculate that in, in a way it, it would change it would change everything completely in, in the sense that it would be a much slower process first of all because 
you can't sort of make impulsive decisions. Um, ideally, people have a sort of sense of responsibility that you know they, they are part of uh, something that's also like that they own something that's also the property of others. Um, but but also I, I I can imagine when you when you mention the emotional aspect that it's sort of um, and because it's also slower and more calm that that it's it's, it's maybe sort of reassuring mm -hmm. I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. It creates a form that follows another logic than any other yeah. markets mm -hmm. yeah. because of that. Yeah. So it's it's about the mm. the, the tempo mm -hmm. for sure, but mm -hmm. it's also all the other things. Yeah. It's like art market also is this. Other system mm. that is not uh, that has other logics than mm. other markets, and this one potentially yeah. can has can have a new. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The shareholders also own uh, the possibility to reframe the work by bringing it into shows with other thematics and so on. So, so is the shareholders also shareholders of the intellectual property within the work? Yeah. The theme of the work, I could bend it to be about something else than what was uh, initially intended. Mm -hmm. um, and, and how would that work? Is, is the, the artwork fixed by a certain context or a certain uh, artwork description and then I can propose it to markets or am I also as a shareholder involved in the future of the work? Mm, I think yeah, on this... Uh, intellectual property level, mm -hmm. you don't have um, much of agency there. No. I think that would... But it does stipulate that they can propose, that they can propose they exhibitions, can propose, so in a sense... Yeah. So yeah. I propose it to a, a because show that's the about only post-colonial uh, uh, trading or something. I move it into the gold coin, into the faces, the men and the women on a gender, all these things that could kind of be, it could be reframed in and, mm -hmm. and become parts of other art markets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. That that could be yes, but not to yeah. I think yeah. that could work. Mm -hmm. And actually, that makes it already quite speculative. Like mm -hmm. uh, I was having, we were having this short conversation this morning where I was saying. Um, Peter and I have this ongoing argu argument about how uh, open this work mm -hmm. should be. And we like to leave this golden coin with... There is like a text also about that. It was, it also, it was presented in Athens Biennale as a performance, where we really explain maybe too many things about it. And now our idea is to leave it more, you know, without saying things about it, because then this creates this uh, uh, this moment where other people can can project their own ideas on that. Uh, whereas market for material value is not so speculative in this way because it is what it is and it does this. It could do a few more other things, but it's not so abstract you in mean, a way. It's you mean the, the way that it's discursively functioning is, is like um, control and the text and the archive, right? Is that uh, what you refer to? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, like it is defined what what it actually tries to be, no? Mm -hmm. It's like there is a yeah. really lots of things written about it yeah. and tons That's of debates. I mean, the text, the discursive. Mm -hmm. Kind of yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's so it's very self-conscious, yeah, yeah. let's say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas, uh, you know, like this work of art, for example, is very, very open. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So it's interesting to see yeah. what role speculations, speculation as an idea, not just in an economic sense, sure. place in the art, uh, but also yeah. in a conceptual mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why we yeah. like to keep it uh, now very open and see yeah. what you could imagine about it and then of course you can also propose it in an exhibition about colonialism, it also fits there in, in, a, in a different way that I thought it yeah. when I was yeah. making it, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. I like that a lot, yes. that idea, because it's also a critique of um, you know, right now, what is what is most important, uh, the art object itself or its mediation? You know, mm. what, and, and, and how do we manage between mm. those two poles? Mm. Uh, yeah. and, and maybe right now you could say that there's a, 
um, there's a tendency to sometimes have the mediation around things, uh, feel more or or, yeah. or be, um, uh, which is of course yeah. potentially a critique of curating and uh, yeah. and the many layers that comes with it. Um, but it's also something that you regularly see, you know, mm -hmm. uh, artworks placed in context where you're like, oh, yeah. that's a stretch, but okay, I understand, yeah, yeah. but you pull that from there, mm -hmm. and I know the logic and the understanding of how you're mm -hmm. reading it, but it can be completely, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and of course there's, there's also an, an economy in that, uh, that mm -hmm. uh, curators or museums or gallery directors or whatever, mm -hmm. they can... Uh, they can get artists mm -hmm. in uh, to things, constellations that are maybe not ex mm -hmm. that well considered because mm -hmm. there's an economy of uh, CDs and shows yes. and, and yeah. points and that's why I think that it's fun to think around mm -hmm. what you were saying in this little object as also an object that has a CD and, mm -hmm. and then if you start to uh, just make more points mm -hmm. and, yeah. and broaden its uh, broaden its conceptual mm -hmm. framing mm -hmm. because it's Value, value uh, creation. Also, but at, but at the same time, you can also show it in really unpopular shows, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah. At, at Bredegade yeah. yes. in one of the auction uh, yeah. galleries mm. that have everything for Flower sale and like, online and so on. Mm. Uh, I could propose it being shown there, and it would fall in value, right? Because it yeah. would be yeah. Uh, yeah. bad for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, mm. that, that's the thing that's interesting about. Um, the mediations of a certain art object, mm -hmm. uh, the different kind of mediations aren't um, aren't necessarily conceptually distinct from each other. So, for instance, when like you see, you know, you see an artwork by by an artist in an exhibition, and you think like, hmm, does this really belong here? It's kind mm -hmm. of a stretch. You can almost always explain it like either well, either you know they're friends with the curators, or mm -hmm. it's um, <laughs> or, or or it's it's you know. A work that maybe doesn't fit in the exhibition, but it's by an artist that has a big name that sort of adds to the yeah. prestige of the, of the exhibition for, for, for that reason. I so, the cake. yeah, exactly. And 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 so I, I guess um, market for a material value as a project is concerned with the mediation of of, of that artwork of, of the coin, but the economic mediation, and it is kind of. Um, it's kind of a twilight zone, it's kind of a blurred boundary, of course, mm -hmm. between the economic mediation and indeed what, what, what exhibitions it would participate in. Because exactly like you say, like there's um, sort of you know, more prestigious, more symbolic, mm -hmm. symbolically valuable exhibitions would, yeah, would influence it positively, whereas I mean, you don't want it to be in certain other places, I think. So that's, it, it's so kind of challenging to think about that. Who would decide that? Would that also be up for a vote? Like, where the words are Well, we didn't ask if we were allowed to exhibit at 60. <laughs> for example, maybe we should have asked. We have a hate group for 60. Mm. 60 hate crimes, so yeah. careful. <laughs> Something that I find really fascinating about this project is actually, and, and that has nothing to do with the work I did, but that the coin is actually here. That there mm -hmm. actually is an yeah. artwork. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I could imagine this artwork about a speculative mm -hmm. artwork mm -hmm. that wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. by this paper, in the, somehow in, in, in these questions, it, it, we are talking about microfilm material value, and mm -hmm. that's more mm -hmm. uh, immaterial than that work which is actually yeah. there, right? So, mm -hmm. so I don't know, maybe these questions should have been about the gold coin or because exactly. it's, it's, quite, it's quite important for me that the artwork is actually present mm -hmm. and it has been produced. Mm -hmm. We're not uh, on this philosophical mm -hmm. level where we're producing mm -hmm. non-value, mm -hmm. you are actually asking people to have yeah. a share in a thing, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which I yeah. really appreciate, yeah. just to make that yeah. clear, that yeah. the, the thing is actually in this mm -hmm. space, yeah. um, which makes it different than other speculations on yeah. the idea of art as yeah. a material uh, value. Yeah. 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 However, like for me, mm -hmm. we are also creating a second work, you know, which is mm -hmm. then, because this shares, it's always uh, two, so you take one and I keep one, mm -hmm. so Peter and I have all this, mm -hmm. the archive of all the shares. Mm -hmm. So now if somebody comes and say, I want to buy this project, what he would buy is not just a golden coin, but it's also this 
archival centers and, and we're also taking pictures of the people holding their set to show that they are actual people. So it's like a for me, it's really hard to distinguish this, these boundaries, mm -hmm. and I I don't even understand it for myself what this whole mean, means yet exactly. Um, so it's a, it's a, an ongoing investigation into becoming more conscious about things like that. I don't know if it, if it if it even was it, you know, like I don't know why we are inclined to to think about these things, but on on the other hand, when you hear that. I don't know, uh, the rents uh, increasing due to you know, uh, financial speculation and you don't know what financial speculation is that affects our lives in such a material way. For me, it's, I really want to know more about that and see, try to imagine how could it be if we would practice things a little differently. In quite an interesting example happened in Denmark when there was an upswing or whatever you call it in the economy and everybody was in galleries at that mm. point and everybody was buying works uh, mm. to have above their sofas and their new flats and so on and everybody was uh, selling and selling and selling and, and there was these large paintings and they were really, really expensive and then the bubble burst. Mm. And a lot of these painters, which are uh, my generation and, and my colleagues, um, had these immense prices for their works, but mm -hmm. they couldn't put the prices down because that would kind of yeah, disgrace yeah, yeah. the one uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the works already bought. So they had to go down in format, right? So there was this physical <laughs> <laughs> divide the, the huge paintings between totally. so. they made small canvases, and it was it was a very physical mm. it was a very physical proof to something very yeah. speculative and something mm. very immaterial. Yeah. They were actually doing very very small mm. paintings because mm. they could, they simply could not build it up again. So oh, that's interesting. Small. Mm. So there were small artworks, right, in every show after that, which was really really mm. uh, really. really I'm, I was almost saying really nice, but very very tragic for for a lot yeah. of artists that they were actually uh, held into formats that they yeah. didn't want to paint in. Yes. Um, it's a, almost an idea of the market controlling the the artist's hand yeah. a little bit because mm. of course if you have like. Human size is a different painting. The movements mm -hmm. and the, like, of course, mm -hmm. all of the micro details in that piece. If you're scaling quite a lot from from that to that, and here comes again a little bit this question about the economy and the emo emotions. You know, and yeah. how it's all connected. Because yeah. yeah, right. you think that ah, artists are happy just you know being alone mm -hmm. in their atelier, and, you know, mm -hmm. mixing colors and getting the right done, but it's then how this the economy affects you psychologically and then how this affects also your work or the person you're becoming through this is really I think it's something that we were afraid to discuss even. But what I also find very funny always is when you, when you hear sort of in the news or in newspapers or wherever you read your financial newspaper it's super, super normal to uh, Anthropomorphize the market as if it had feelings, you know, as, as if it has a sentient being. Like you know, there's no no market trust, or you know, the market is it's, it's very up to date. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it's right. which which also sort of I mean the fact that it's it's based on something as 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 fleeting and as 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 yeah as intangible as emotions also shows indeed like yeah. the the speculative nature of, of the of the financial market mm -hmm. and this is even more the case of course in the in the art market which is uh entirely dependent basically on 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 especially in contemporary art on, on trends and like fashion and taste mm -hmm. um, so yeah and th that's kind of a mechanism that i i think that that this um that this project sort of steps away from by the sense that you know it's it's at least you know you can see what it is you see who the people are you it's it's a bit, a bit more tangible and a bit more concrete than uh, the value of a certain artwork going up or down depending on mm -hmm. yeah on taste or something like that but it's also interesting I just want to add another thing to mm -hmm. what you said Sam because you were talking about it this morning, the fact that uh, when Nixon freed the dollar from the gold in 71, mm -hmm. that was actually mm -hmm. the period when the 
when we started to see all these immaterial artworks mm. coming mm. up mm. in the mm. art market, and yeah. and that is actually really interesting. We have seen this sort of oh, yeah, yeah tendency before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But there is also I'm thinking with an artwork like this, it might be here, but this might also be the right time to sell it. Mm. Because this is interesting right now, it might mm. not be in five years. Mm. This is a popular art piece, mm. I think, it's a popular discussion. Mm. Immaterial value, it mm. might not be, so for speculations, mm. maybe it's also mm. a good idea to use it. Bring us a buyer. <laughs> pump it up and, and, mm. and, and bubble it up now mm. and, and sell fast before uh, mm -hmm. we are back to the Anthropocene or something again, I don't know what the next yeah. one is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's right, it's, it's about now, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's been, it's mm. been, uh, it's been for a long now. time yeah. already, yeah. so yeah. I don't know if it will fade no. like that anymore. Mm. I think it's... We'll have to have an expert into it. Yeah. Mm. This course analysis expert. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Or wait long enough is also an idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have to die. It's also if you guys die. <laughs> <laughs> no. also really, usually is a great yeah. uh, influence on this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cannot die right now. I'm still, I'm still famous. You can't have. You have to knock on wood or something right now. Yeah, knock on wood there. Um, we don't can know. I add a comment to that um, yeah. idea uh, of uh, this uh, idea that it's gonna that mm. it's now mm. and it's a mm. boosted moment mm. and you should uh, because I think what is interesting uh, because I'm in a sense uh, of course it's the the money is the, mm. the driving force here but uh, it's also uh, an archive as you said before mm. and if the archive uh, follows uh, the depression of the value uh, and it's it's downturn I I think that's uh, Interesting as well because if we if it was sold and just sold at this particular moment where it was the perfect moment and, and the project would be dead afterwards it would yeah either you would have to I think uh, find a way that people take there because they get their share and then you could ask people do you want to reinvest uh, fifty percent of it or ten percent back in to give it again uh, if it was a good idea to sell. Uh, because I think for the archive of it, uh, that I think is a very interesting point mm. of this project because it also tells about the time we have now, mm. the economic changes, mm. the perceptions, these podcasts, the documents, mm. all of that, and it has a huge value also uh, to not let it go even even if yeah. it is a down uh, yeah. town downturn or whatever. It cannot lose in value. I mean, with this system, mm. the good thing is that it cannot lose in value because you no. have people have bought this amount of shares. It's mm. done. Mm. You cannot take them back. You know. But it can lose value so if we say that right now there is a great deal of attention, like you were saying around in the attention the, economy. Yeah, yeah, on the attention yeah. economy, uh -huh. as you also began your your talk about this attention economy. This the, what do you call it in, in Marx, you say the, the, sur no, the, the exchange value, mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. yeah. the surplus value. Uh, that one is uh, not fixed and can... Yeah. can mm -hmm. so that's also where the question of speculation comes in, right? Yeah. If, if this project yeah. starts to speculate in from the value you have the, uh, gained and you mm -hmm. know that it's worth, mm -hmm. you start buying other mm -hmm. artworks, you mm -hmm. collectively do yeah. that. And, and that, uh, I think the, the last question on is also really interesting, uh, the whole grassroots yeah. part of it, and, and when, when does speculation affect trust? I think it's a really, really interesting uh, question. Um, I won't uh, try to answer it, but I just highlight it as something really interesting. It's maybe also in... In, in housing market in Denmark, there is, we have something called shared ownership of apartments exactly, and, yeah. and these shared ownership groups start to speculate mm -hmm. and then the, sh the share part of it mm -hmm. kind of um, um, yeah. at least moves in the, in the background of yeah. other speculations, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But this combination of, of something material going yeah. material in, yeah. the, in the thought of like yeah. As money, as a mm. capital, as an idea, yeah. that's actually not existing since mm. it was not born up mm. in the gold. So, so, so it is not a religion, but it's still an idea we all buy, buy into. And mm. as long as we all do that, it's fine. Mm. But as long as we don't, yeah. <laughs> so, mm. so, so I think that so as long as we buy into the 
mm. value of this. Yeah, so as long as everyone believes it, it yeah. works. Yeah. So in a perfect trajectory for this project, it would be very mm. nice to also record somehow how shareholders mm. change mm. in mm. the course of more and more value being at stake. Would be mm -hmm. interesting to see if this mm -hmm. grassroots yeah. artists mm -hmm. and curators and whoever you get to to actually buy one of these, yeah. will they change mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. uh, as group? Yeah. If the investment becomes actually an investment, because mm -hmm. right now we're all in it for fun or yeah. like you imagine or yeah. for the project. Yeah. But yeah. when does trust uh, disappear? Or Into yeah, and how yeah. how willing are people for risk? You know, that's a very mm -hmm. personal. Mm -hmm. If you do a um, job application, you have to take a personality test. You can go in and figure out how and the people, how much risk people are willing to take, and it's very very different from individuals. So it could also be that it's fun to see if the group has a majority of risk takers, or if it's something <laughs> like that. You know, just to because it's 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 different than when it's one shareholder. That's what's mm -hmm. interesting. That it's connectedly, but. How does the collective be? How is it then? Is it a is it a brave one, a risky per personality that the, that the collectivity um, express, or is it an anxious one that holds and keeps the nostalgia and yeah. you know slow, nostalgic, or risky, fast performance? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. agency like there's there's some nice uh, stuff in that also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that would probably depend on the value of the work. And mm -hmm. as you said, mm -hmm. if it suddenly had a huge value, then probably the shareholder group's way of acting and they would be different. Mm -hmm. It would change. Materialized or it would be become tangible if people were to express it. Mm -hmm. you know, I feel, I think, I say mm -hmm. we should do. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, actually, for me, if it, if it suddenly now somebody comes and says I want to buy it for ten thousand euros, <laughs> it would be very stupid because Peter and I don't have shares of our own. <laughs> <laughs> But why, why is it that you don't have shares? Yeah. Why? Actually, this is something uh, I would like to discuss with mm. all of you today because we haven't, we've never really taken this decision what to do, what do we do with ourselves. We thought, mm -hmm. okay, we. We just get paid by the people who invest mm. 10 and 20 euros, but mm. it's really like nothing, mm. basically. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you might, you know, make much more profit from our artwork mm -hmm. than the artists mm -hmm. themselves. So it's very stupid. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, to be against artist precarity, and now mm -hmm. it's like kind of very <laughs> creates. <laughs> But I think you, of course, uh, because I'm also quite interested in the question number three, I think you should have shares, but I think you should also be credited for the work. I think the shareholders yes. are courtesy of, you could make a lot yeah, exactly. of but the, owners of the That's what work. this iPad will be yeah, about. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. But, but then you would also have a different value or, or, or a share in the projects that since every time the project travels, your currency develops as artists. Uh, yeah. that, that I wouldn't have in, in the same way. Um, so, so, so you yeah. should have shares, but then you get to uh, also get the fame. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like usually, when you sell an artwork, you make a I don't know the English word, but you make a document. Uh, certificate. certificate. Yeah. You yeah. Make a certificate, uh, which is uh, signed and uh, it. it Guarantees the, that it's a unique artwork and yeah. uh, it, it's a legal uh, one that, of course, is in the art world also manipulated a lot. Yeah. These documents and the edition numbers and stuff yeah. like that, we all know. But how would you also make that for if this one? Because if the museum wanted you, they will ask for the legal uh, papers as well. Yes. Um, yeah. Because that usually, <laughs> that usually goes back to uh, I mean, clarifying is, yeah. the, the artist. Uh, yeah. Making of the piece. I guess you need uh, these signatures from all shareholders, right? That they're willing to sell it, or do you? Um, I don't yeah. know how you would uh, construct it legally because yeah. um, it has some legal flaws, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's guarantee guaranteeing um, that you produced it, also, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I didn't produce it, but maybe I did because I, mm. I'm producing it now, or what? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's also. But I think that's a general question. What do you do with all these 
participatory yeah. works, yes. you know, yes. and I make lots of them, yeah. So yeah. 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 but I'm not at the point that I'm selling mm. all, yet to music. No. Like recently, mm. I made this other artwork in Helsinki, which is a collective sculpture mm -hmm. yeah. and, a, right. and a big um, collective video lecture. Yeah. And it might be that it gets sold to the to the yeah. local museum there. We're yeah. trying to see if that. So, but also for that, I wouldn't know how to deal with mm. how to deal with it. And I think it it makes it also yeah. complicated for somebody yeah. who would like to buy it. You know, maybe yeah. they wouldn't buy it for yeah. this reason yeah. because it's mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But maybe maybe like. Because I guess what you're proposing is then a clear distinction between the authorship over the work, let's say the intellectual, uh, yeah, the intellectual ownership, the conceptual ownership, on the one hand, and then on the on the other, the people who co-produce the value, uh, which is all the investors, but maybe also all the people who, who work on it in any other way, and this, yeah, this distinction, yeah, kind of. Kind of makes sense, <laughs> I, I, I guess. You know, it's it's. Uh, but in, in in the case of this work, it's kind of it's it's also complicated because I mean, in 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 the other work you mentioned, like a collective sculpture, it's it's kind of, you know, it's just the the the, the distinction is quite common to make between who's conceptualizing it and who mm -hmm. sort of collaborated on it, but through yeah. work, not through. Yeah. Uh, not the intellectual labor, basically. In this case, it's different because the the work is really yeah the yeah it is the financial construction, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's but that they they have added creative labor into yeah. it. You know, it's their yeah. own design, let's yeah. say, also. So, but within the framework, that within the framework. That, that was just me. Yeah, yeah. yeah and if you took that and compared it to a gallery situation, there would be the art object and the artist's uh, financial connection to that, and then a deal between yeah. them, saying, mm -hmm. I want 50 50, I create value around mm -hmm. you, uh, I, I present yeah. you at markets, I mm -hmm. have connections to markets, so yeah. therefore mm -hmm. you know me and mm -hmm. my connection to mm -hmm. the market and value, so therefore we split. And, yeah. some, and these numbers can go up and down and yeah. like that. But um, I think for me it seems quite clear in a project like this because it is shareholders. Mm -hmm. like I'm not invited to as a participatory artist. I'm invited to, to, to have a share in yeah. the value of the work. So I would never uh, suggest mm -hmm. that that it would be a problem for mm -hmm. you to sign an agreement mm -hmm. to sell it. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. want my money back, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And, yes. and I own some yeah. of it, so I, I get to say if you can sell it, but it's of course yours to. Exactly, yeah. And if mm -hmm. if if it turns into a thing that becomes a controversy, I don't really see it. But let's say mm -hmm. it was very controversial. It's also a view. You take the trash, right? Or, or mm -hmm. and, but you also yeah. get some of the profit, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. In at least, a, if not, it should be framed otherwise. It should be. Mm -hmm more inviting it into the actually mm -hmm. uh, ownership mm -hmm. of, of the, 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 the art practice and mm -hmm. the work itself, yeah. which yeah, I don't yeah. see in the But it's, it would be a very different exactly. work, I think, then. Yeah. 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 True. But then harking back to what we were discussing before, like we were, we were mentioning the, the conceptual framing of the work, that it does like affect Again, like if you as a shareholder would um, would suggest a different framing or a different you know discourse mm -hmm. to place it in, there already I would say for me the distinction maybe also becomes problematic. Um, let's say that that would at least be a moment that sort of challenges the distinction between a shareholder and the artist. Um, yeah, which yeah, or a certain shareholder. Let's mm. say, just to be very clear, Donald Trump buys mm. quite a lot of it. Mm. Um, his daughter. You have his name on it every time you show it. Yeah. Right? At least in the market, you see mm. a lot of these uh, uh, people mm. that are, are backing up products, mm. and then they get a bad rep, and then that product mm. dies immediately, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so there's also a risk in letting a person mm. like me in, because you have no <laughs> idea, <laughs> <laughs> or anybody else, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, it, no, could be, uh, it could be the, the time You have a lot of debt, right? Holy right? <laughs> 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 will come for it, right? That's why I haven't signed anything yet. <laughs> Uh, but no, but that is also yeah. a risk, right? The, yeah. the, 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 mm -hmm. as, as you invite money in, yes. you also get tainted. Yeah. It's yeah. back to the personal. Mm -hmm. It's not the yeah. emotional, but it's back to the how yeah. it's... Yeah. Like, yeah. Think yeah. to that again. Yeah. It could be about a sex scandal that affects mm. something. Or mm. any event that <laughs> <laughs> someone uh, yeah. ends up being involved with. Yeah. 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 Complex. Very complex, yes. <laughs> But I think like that it also it, it, the project is also uh, an opener to to, mm. to 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 visualizing some of these mm. problems out there, right? Mm. And, and how the structure yeah. is yeah. is um, yeah. is everywhere and, yeah. and, and quite complex. I, th I I think so. I think I think what's what's interesting about the project is it's sort of a miniature uh, size. Uh, sample of, yeah. of, of how economic relations work more in general mm -hmm. and that makes it more sort of tangible and concrete and possible to discuss. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> called bitter money, which is uh, where money actually are tainted with feelings or, or they have some kind of, that money is not just money, but it has already, it goes, as you said, but it goes with a, a certain attachment. For example, mm -hmm. if you earn money in the mines and it's dangerous to, to yeah. earn the money in the mines, yes. then you shouldn't use them. And it's, it's, it's actually in many different cultures, but you shouldn't use them for buying a house or a wife or, or putting, I mean, you don't want to buy money. <laughs> 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 And then the wife would die, or the house would, mm. would, would go down, mm. burn, or so this money is somehow tainted mm. different from other yeah. money. It's a bit what you also yeah. say mm. in the way that the money coming from from let's yeah. say yeah. it's yeah. different than yeah. money coming yeah. from yeah. from yeah. Sam, yeah. 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 probably <laughs> <laughs> because it actually the, the money is not just money but also has like yeah. attachment. It has a connotation. But, connotation. but yeah. where did yeah. the money come before? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And there, there's yeah. there's huge numbers of, of, of controversies around this in the art world. I mean, I guess recently there was like I think it was the Melbourne Biennial last year or something like that, when one of the main sponsors was the Sydney Biennial. The Sydney Biennial. Yeah. It was yeah. an arms trader, trader or something. It was. Like that. It was uh, they were uh, also a part of their business mm -hmm. was also invested in mm -hmm. in these uh, refugee camps. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a, I was very involved with it actually. Yeah, I was yeah. showing in it. So and we were a group that were kind of uh, going uh, or at least um, um, making a lot of meetings and, and, and some boycotted mm -hmm. and, and others found yeah. other ways to kind of address it. And he, he had also stepped down, uh, which was quite complicated because mm -hmm. Sydney Biennial also uh, got a huge mm -hmm. hit from one of the biggest culture supporters in Sydney, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and were very shocked, and mm. the artist kind of took over uh, and, mm. and almost destroyed the Sydney Biennial. So, yeah. so it had, yeah. it had, there was a lot of, mm. all of a sudden there was a lot of balls flying in the air, and, and it was kind of hard to catch them from mm. around the world, from the mm. other part, uh, end of the world, mm. right? But, but it also goes to show that how fast um, this economy changes, uh, um, mm -hmm. also in, in then the interest of the Sydney Biennial or the rumor of the change mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. on the Sydney Biennial mm -hmm. um, and on that curator yeah. who didn't see it coming at all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, there's, a, there's a similar example, I mean it's similar but it's the opposite. In, in, uh, I, I live in Amsterdam and there's a, one of the big foundations that supports cultural work is um, is an organization that all their money comes from a pension fund, from a huge amount of laborers at the at the Rotterdam Harbor who got fired in the 70s or something, late 70s, something like that. 
uh, and they never got paid their pension. They never got paid their their um, their uh, compensation fee for for mm-hmm. getting fired. Mm-hmm. So this was a huge controversy then. The money sort of stayed in a place for for maybe three decades, something like that, maybe longer. Uh, they invested it, so it, it became more and um, interest, etc. And now it's it's one of the one of the biggest um, yeah one of the biggest arts foundations in in, in Holland. And everyone kind of knows this, you know. It's not kind of okay, but it's but it's long enough ago, I guess. So every, I mean, and actually, interestingly, you have know, lots of like super critical left wing artist organizations, especially get get uh, get funded by uh, by this by this foundation. Um, so it's 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 kind of yeah. In this case, it's controversial, but not controversial enough to make a difference. It's kind I guess. of like a relationship based on, on guilt. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But it's really interesting how we associate all these bad, mm. relatively bad yeah. feelings with money, mm. such as guilt. You know? mm. I think maybe guilt is the most prominent one we associate with. Like, we feel guilty also when, not, not in such maybe more mm. particular cases, but also when we make a lot of money or we don't make enough money, mm-hmm. you know, it's like guilt is something that comes up. But, it, but I also see, I also see, but it, I don't see it as a positive term, but I also see this idea of fortune or hope. Like mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. one of the main reasons why artists can't get together is because mm-hmm. we all walk all over each other to mm-hmm. get up to somewhere that's better than here. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we would, we would kind of often call pull the ones just in front of us away to, to yeah. kind of get to it, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, it is precarious. Or, yeah. um, so there's also this idea of, mm-hmm. of like a lottery fortune out there, mm-hmm. that 1% that gets to have a lot of money at some point, <laughs> uh, that, we, yeah. that we kind of chip into often. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I think a lot of these things are also uh, there because we, we believe that mm-hmm. it is like yeah. this, you mm-hmm. know. It's, uh, mm-hmm. I think there is... Not just in the arts, but in general, there is enough resources for everybody if we change our perspective on how it's just a matter of change our, changing our thinking about certain things. And yeah, all this stupid game of like uh, me first is like so ridiculous because no people don't see that we are all in this together. You cannot be well off in a world where. All yeah. this shit is happening anyway, you know, no matter how much money you can make. I, 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 I completely agree with you, but the, the, the point is actually that, you know, the, uh, the more precarious your situation is, the more you do get forced into this, into this paradigm of competition and you sort of have to play it. I mean, you become... But you, it's a matter also if you accept precarity yeah. or not, you know, you, you make, you, up to a very big mm. extent, we make ourselves precarious because that's the common, you know, yeah. description nowadays and we keep, we keep, uh, you know, yeah. saying it and repeating it mm. and then it becomes mm. more than... That's true, no, no, that's I also think true. It's really just a narrative and mm-hmm. sometimes creating yeah. names and concepts mm-hmm. for things they don't really help make the situation better yeah. you know? no, but they can they, but they can though create a, a, a unity if, if you can yes. if you can have a name that you can fall under that you can kind of mm-hmm. uh, or, or like uh, a friend of mine wrote like how do we find each other in the age of camouflage right mm-hmm. like if we don't make up these names mm. or, or if we don't make these definitions, mm. we are out there yeah. where everybody's behind mm. uh, a mask. But we usually make these names on our disadvantage, yeah. that's the problem, that's true. you know, and we create just one more enemy to fight mm. against. While actually, I think I really like this uh, post humanist discourse mm. because it proposes this idea of non, non dualism. Mm. So basically, it's not again about creating. Uh, us, the precarious and them, you know, the money, it just is not a matter of creating, you know, mm-hmm. it's because it's again creating this repertoire of otherness, which yeah. is what basically creates all the problems and everything. I think an added problem in the art world though is that we, you sort of are valued or evaluated in a way that's, that's always so individualized already, so if we talk about how um, what, what, what kind of hampers precisely that is, you know, you, 
you are expected always to be really unique and interesting with creative and special thoughts. And I mean, you, you basically, um, the people who are successful generally are so fucking interesting that they don't even agree uh, on basic stuff with the people or their friends or something like that. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's a very atomizing, individualizing sort of, and, and I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't want to re reject it as well, but let's say, in, in, if, you, if you are talking about precarity and the, and the reason why, it's, why, why we do accept this paradigm of competition is, it's, it's because I think it's, it's deeply implied in, uh, in the way we think about, um, in the way we value art, basically. And now I'm not speaking about yeah. value e mm. only in economic terms, but um, yeah. how we look at it. Yeah. I was just curious, I mean, um, I don't mean to formulate it, but I was just wondering, I mean, this is kind of an intervention into mm. the financial mm. market or way of doing things, um, but you, you said something about also trying to, uh, yeah, kind of uh, fight this way of othering each other. Is there also some aspect of this that is not only trying to intervene, but also make us more like, like think about different structures of making us more responsible towards each other? Or was just curious. Um, yeah. I don't know how to answer this question. Um, there is this also other work which is related to all of this, which is called the gigantic jelly blob, which is a, the jelly blob is a metaphor for financial capitalism at least everywhere, and it sticks to everything. You know, like there is no way to escape it, escape it, or so on. And um, it's kind of like a lecture performance where I started and then I give the microphone to people in the room to continue this lecture. And it usually comes to, to this uh, result that actually, uh, yeah, the, the way how we communicate with each other, how we continue each other's thoughts and how we help to say each other's reality, basically. So, yeah. To this extent, that's, that's why I like that this work has this discursive element as mm. well, because it's all really happening inside our heads. And if we can find a way that we speak in an empowered manner about finance and, and that causes precarity. So for me, that, that's actually the best I can give. You know, I don't think there is, it's, it's really about intervening in finance. You know. mm. That's not also my job. No. And also, it would be very possible, of course. But you know, it's, also, it's also a project that feeds very much into one mm. certain way of economy, right? Mm. Like mm. It, 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 it mirrors the mm. economy yeah, yeah. of the market, yeah, yeah. where there are so many other economies out yeah. there, the shared economies, just people mm. sharing stuff mm. and, and helping each other out in many ways, and where, mm. where, where the word precarious also brings it a, a, in a different tone because you actually trying to stabilize mm. each other's precarity yeah. is, instead of just feeling precarious and then going for it yeah. as, as hard as you can. Um, and, and I think I think I could imagine opening up other economies mm. to, to this economy and, and, and many I think many artists have worked with trying to make art money, trying to make other mm. economies but, yeah. but there's also a certain falling back into the categories mm. of, of this, uh, neoliberal uh, uh, economy and then really thinking like what kinds of economies are out there in housing projects mm. in, in other communities and so on where people actually have have a situation where they are bound to stick to a different kind of economy mm. because I think my situation I'm a very I'm a speculative uh, fi fi finance person in my life right I get uh, a grant for work that I haven't done yet, and then I do another work for that grant. And if I, if I, yeah. one time don't get a grant, I'm out. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, I'm out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm maybe I'm maybe some ten thousand euros behind, mm. which is a lot, right? Yeah. And we are used to that kind of speculative financing. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and and we and that's also why we maybe speak in these terms mm -hmm. yeah where yes. other people that have no chance of being mm -hmm. in that kind of financial market mm -hmm. have maybe already developed other words for the market or at yeah. least that's something interesting to also frame that, that this coin is really in the world of coins mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? and also quite important that it is a coin that it yeah. really says i am i'm gold i'm money mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Velkommen til Claus. Det er jo også i udstillingen, Så lad jeg ikke få styr på shareholders. <laughs> And it actually used to be a, a real Elizabeth gold, this one. Mm. But uh, really? we destroyed it, actually. Yeah. I don't know if that's considered a crime. <laughs> oh, it could also be. I think it might actually be. So that's all the thing yeah. that from the history of yeah. English. <laughs> So ah, that's why, not because of the. Um, so what you have done is actually asking people to participate in your crime. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> But as we talked about before, all game and yeah. Yeah. also yeah. 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 You might like, you might want to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's let's change the topic. This is all be, This is going to be removed from the recording. <laughs> What time is it? What time I are think uh, we're like discussing now one and a half hours. Maybe it's good to end this meeting slowly. Unless, of course, there's any urgent points or questions or things that you still find interesting to discuss. I just had one question. Yeah. Is it practical matter? Uh, not for me, but, but can you become a shareholder on the web or should you be physically present? No, it's just uh, physically because it's. It's a physical contract. Mm -hmm. So you have your chance now. You have your yes. chance now. But it's just, I know, but it's just, <laughs> if you want to, for example, as a shareholder, you could have interest in, 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 in recruiting other shareholders mm. to, exactly. to, yeah. to, uh, to uh, uh, increase the value of the, of your, of yeah. the object. But uh, I, um, we had a lot of discussions about that and we, we thought that it's good to keep a personal, like that we have met these people mm -hmm. once, yeah. somewhere at least, mm -hmm. and talked to them. So and then we can have this physical aspect. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why it's, it's a physical contract and not a smart contract or mm -hmm. whatever. Is the contract here for the whole uh, opening of the show? Or only while you guys are here? Uh, yeah, Eben will uh, take the role of uh, like uh, selling mm -hmm. these shares. How, how many shares? Uh, Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Yes, so far. I need to talk to my experts. <laughs> Before, right? Yeah. Or at least my family. <laughs> 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 fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. Yeah. Well. Do we have to conclude somehow, or can we just end it? I think we sort of meandered, so it would be very difficult to conclude. Yes. I also don't we think really any... We keep this luxury yeah. Which, But that's good, that's a good sign, I think. Um, I don't... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Don't, you were talking about like the documentation of this process, like archiving, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the discourse uh, born from this. Yeah. But are you going to, like, this? Is this going to be something that it's all public online? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Actually, it would be nice if you can write down your names if mm -hmm. I'm allowed to publish them that you were part of this meeting. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 It's also very nice work for the for the project, I think, with the text and mm -hmm. all this information that the material, the market for material value. Uh, yes. Web, uh, The, uh, you you check the website. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's a resource somehow. Mm -hmm. Consider it more as a resource. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that if you are also satisfied with all these uh, mm -hmm. new uh, perspectives yeah. mm -hmm. into the market and the work, 
think it would be a good time to end the discussion. Yes. There will be, I think maybe there will be hot coffee. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you all very Thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But I'm very